This lecture is part of an online commutative algebra course and will be about examples of regular local rings. So in the previous lecture we looked at some examples of regular local rings, especially over algebraically closed fields. Um, the problem is um, if you start looking at non-algebraically closed fields, in characteristic p greater than zero, then some rather odd things can happen with regular local rings. And the, the, the first couple of examples will be to illustrate um, what might happen. So suppose we take a variety um, v over some field. So we generally, that, that then um, its coordinate ring would be the ring of polynomials over the field in n variables quotiented out by some ideal. And then we can localize at some point. Well, if you're working over an algebraically closed field, a point is just going to be um, point x1 up to xn in k to the n. However, if the field isn't algebraically closed, the points can be a bit more general than this. So a point here will correspond to a maximal ideal. Um, and we can take the local ring at this point and we ask the following problem. If the local rings at the points are regular, is the same true over the algebraic closure k bar. So in this case, instead of taking the ring of polynomials over k, we take the ring of polynomials over the algebraic closure in n variables, and again quotient out by the ideal i. So, so if all these local rings are regular, are these ones? Um, well, in characteristic p, uh, this isn't actually true. And this was discovered, I think, by Zariski. And when Zariski came up with this example, everybody got a little bit confused by it at first. So um, an example might be something like this. Let's take the curve x to the p plus y to the p equals a. Here we're working over a field k of characteristic p greater than zero, and a is not the pth power. So um, in particular, the field can't be algebraically closed. Um, then this has a maximal ideal given by y, because if we take k x to the p plus y, sorry, k x y, modulo x to the p plus y to the p minus a, and then also quotient out by y, then this is just k of x over x to the p minus a, and this is irreducible because a is not a piece power, so this is a field. So um, this is actually a maximal ideal because the quotient by it is a field. Um, and um, the local ring has dimension 1, um, so if we localise at y, this local ring has dimension 1, and the maximal ideal y is generated by one element. Um, so the ring is regular. Um, in the, since the maximal ideal is generated by one element, this means the um, cotangent space is also one-dimensional. Um, so um, over this non-algebraically closed field, we've got a we, we, we've got a maximal ideal that's that, that that's that, that that gives us a regular local ring. Now let's look at what happens. over the algebraic closure k bar. 
where in this case the curve becomes k bar x y over x to the p plus y to the p minus a. And now um, something a bit weird happens because this is just k bar of x y modulo x plus y minus b to the p where b to the p is equal to a. So um, it not only become this not only factorizes but but this the, the, this ring has nil potent elements in it. Um, and um, this means in fact the ring the the, the, the um, well it's not really a variety anymore but the um, the ring is non-regular at every maximal ideal. So something has gone very badly wrong with our notion of regularity being non-singular. We, we, we've got some variety over a non-algebraically closed field that's regular at every point and when we move to the algebraically closed field something goes completely horribly wrong. We start getting nil potent elements all over the place and so on. Um, um, actually, to see what's going on, it's easier to simplify it a bit and look at the naught dimensional case. Um, so instead of looking at the variety x to the p plus y to the p equals a, let's just look at the variety x to the p minus a equals zero. So this is just naught dimensional. So making everything naught dimensional makes it a lot easier. Of course, we're saying a is not um, a power of p for p in k. Um, and um, there's uh, the, 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 the field, that, sorry, the ring kx over x to the p minus a is now just a field. So it's only got one maximal ideal which is zero and the local ring at that point is this field and it's certainly regular. Um, there's no problem at all. Um, but over the algebraic closure, if we take k bar x over x to the p minus a, this splits as k bar x over x minus b to the p. And now this is not a field. And in fact, it's not only not a field, this is nil potent elements as before. So it's definitely not a regular local ring. Uh, or, or a regular ring or anything like that. So, 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 so this phenomenon happens even in the naught dimensional case. And we can sort of see what's going on here because if we call this field L, what we're doing is this field here is L tensed over K with K bar. So what we're really doing is taking a tensor product of um, two fields over another field and um, in characteristic P, this can behave a bit oddly. So, so um, let's look more generally at a tensor product L tensor over K of M, where L, K and M are now all fields with K contained in L and K contained in M. And um, let, let's... Let, um, and let's suppose that L is um, a finite extension of K. Then in characteristic naught, L tensor over K M is a product of fields. It's a finite product of fields. So um, since it's a finite product of fields, every every point of it is still going to be regular because its its local ring is just a field. And you can see this as follows. So you write L is equal to K of X over F of X, where this is now irreducible over, over K. Now if it's if it's irreducible over K and the characteristic is equal to zero, this means um, all roots are distinct over k bar. That's because the roots 
the, the, the multiple roots are, are given by the the um, common zeros of f and its derivative and if f is irreducible the derivative has smaller degree so it can't have any common roots and characteristic zero. So um, f splits as f1x, f2x and so on over, um, over the other field m with the fi distinct. So um, L tensor over K of M um, becomes um, um, becomes a product um, M of X over F1 of X times M of X over F2 of X and so on by the Chinese remainder theorem where these are all fields. So in characteristic naught, there are no problems. If, if we've got a, a funny sort of um, naught dimensional variety um, and we look at it over the algebraic closure, it just becomes, um, its coordinate ring is still a product of fields and it's regular at every point. Um, in characteristic P, things can become much stranger. So um, here we take L to be k of x over x to the p minus a and we're going to take this to be m as well and now if we work at l tense over k of m um, this becomes k x y um, modulo x to the p minus a y to the p minus a and this is not a product of fields um, the, the proof that, it, that, that it's a product of fields in characters naught breaks down because x to the p minus a can now have multiple roots over the algebraic closure. In fact, its derivative is identically zero. Um, in fact, it has nilpotent elements, as usual. In fact, we can see there's, the, 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 there's, a, there's a nilpotent element would be, for instance, x minus y is nilpotent because x minus y the p is just equal to x to the p minus y to the p which is a minus a which is equal to zero. Um, so um, what is going on here is um, in characteristic p greater than naught the product of two regular Um, so the, 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 I mean the, the tensor product of two regular rings can uh, be non-regular. So in terms of varieties, this means a product of two non-singular varieties can be singular. If by singular you mean the local rings are not regular. And this is extremely disconcerting because a non-singular variety should be a really nice one that sort of looks, I don't know, locally like a manifold or something like that. And if you if you take a, a product of two manifolds without singularities, this really ought to be a manifold without singularities. So um, in characteristic P over non-algebraically closed fields, this, this breaks down. Um, and there are various ways round it. What, what it's saying roughly is, is that the notion of a regular local ring isn't really, doesn't really quite capture our intuitive concept of non-singular variety in characteristic P. Um, so there are various ways to fix that. Um, Zariski introduced the concept of geometrically regular local ring. And this is a local ring R over um, a field K, so that R tensor over K with K bar is regular. For example, our previous example, K of X over X to the P minus A is regular. It's just a field, but it's not geometrically regular. Um, 
Um, and geometrically regular rings behave rather better than regular rings if you're working with in characteristic P over non-algebraically closed fields. Um, there's actually a closely related concept called smoothness, um, which is closely related to rings being geometrically regular. This was introduced by Grothendieck, and he has a, a much more complicated concept of a map between um, rings R to S uh, being smooth, and in the special case when R is a field, this is related to the concept of being geometrically regular. Uh, anyway, I won't be discussing smoothness uh, in this particular course. Um, the other example I wanted to cover in this lecture of regular local rings was the example um, where you take z of root minus 3. So this is, an if you've done algebraic number theory, you know this is an order in the field q root minus 3. And we also notice um, that it's, it's not a unique factorization domain because 1 plus root minus 3 times 1 minus root minus 3 is equal to 2 times 2 is a, is a non-unique factorization. Um, now, if you've done algebraic number theory, you know that's easy to fix because you take its normalization, in other words, its integral closure in the quotient field, and the normalization is z1 plus root minus 3 over 2. And this is a unique factorization domain. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to look at a certain um, local ring in two of these. And in one of them, this local ring will be non-regular and the other it will be regular. So here's a maximal ideal of z root minus 3. Well, one maximal ideal is 2, 1 plus root minus 3. Um, you can easily check the quotient of this by... Um, um, if, if, if this is m and this is r, then r over m is just a field with, with two elements. Um, on the other hand, if we look at r over m squared, um, we can work out this as, um, let's just localise z to make things a little bit easier, z root minus 3, and then we quotient out by the square of this idea, which is generated by 2, squared and 2 plus 2 root minus 3. And you can easily check that this has, has length equal to 3. Um, in other words, it's got three composition factors of this. So m over m squared has dimension 2. Um, sorry, I should have said we're going to localise this ring at the ideal, at the at the maximal ideal m, and, and I forgot to localise it. Um, now, this ring r has dimension 1, so um, its cotangent space is dimension 2, so r z root minus 3, um, sorry, not r, so z root minus 3 is not regular. And it's not regular at the ideal 2, 1 plus root minus 3. Um, on the other hand, if we take its normalization, um, then z 1 plus root minus 3 over 2 is regular. In fact, it's regular at all maximal ideals. Um, um, you can check this in several ways. For instance, um, this is a unique factorization domain, and you can easily check that at all maximal ideals, the localization is a discrete valuation ring. And discrete valuation rings are certainly um, regular because they're one-dimensional and not only the maximal ideal, but in fact all ideals are generated by one element. Um, so what we have is we have two rings here. We've got the ring z root minus 3, and it's contained in the ring z 1 plus root minus 3 over 2. And this is not regular, whereas this ring is regular. 
And in algebraic number theory, you, you, you need to do a very similar thing um, for any order of an algebraic number field. You really want the ring to be regular. And to do that, you, you do what is known as taking its normalization. In other words, just taking the integral closure of the ring in its quotient field. And geometrically, what this corresponds to is sort of making all the points of its spectrum regular, or you can, you can think of this informally as, as, as making them non-singular. Um, by the way, the, the, there's one slightly disconcerting pitfall here. Suppose we take the ideal 2 in this ring here. Now this is a prime ideal. Um, in fact, you can easily check that z1 plus root minus 3 over 2 um, modulo the ideal 2 is just the field with four elements, so it's, it's a maximal ideal. On the other hand, if you take the ideal 2 in this ring here, it's not prime. Um, in fact, you can check the, the quotient of this is um, just a sum of two fields of order 2. And we seem to have a slight paradox because the inverse image of a prime ideal should be prime. But if you take the ideal 2 here, the corresponding ideal 2 here isn't prime. Well, what's going on? Well, um, this, is, this is a sort of subtle trap because this, the ideal 2, is not the inverse image of the prime ideal 2 in this ring here. It's a sort of easy mistake to make. If you take a set of generators for a prime ideal, the inverse image prime ideal need not be generated by the inverse image of all the generators, which is kind of obvious when you state it, but it's a sort of easy trap to make. The inverse image of the prime ideal 2 is in fact the ideal generated by um, 2 and 1 plus root minus 3 that we, that we had earlier. Okay, that's enough about um, regular local rings. Um, the next lecture will be about Cohen-Macaulay local rings, which are about which is about the mildest condition you can push on a local ring, which makes them behave reasonably.